Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I would like to give you a quick introduction about the workflow and the basic steps to create a structural model in Sophie Plus. So without further ado, let's get into it. To create a structural model, we use Sophie Plus. Sophie Plus is a plugin based on AutoCAD, which allows you to transfer an AutoCAD wireframe model to a Sophistic structural model. And this is what we are going to do now. The first thing we are going to do is we start Sophie Plus. You will see here on the sidebar in this project navigation, the task Sophie Plus modeling. I can either right click on this task and select edit, or you can also use the double click. Let me quickly explain what we have in front of us. This is now AutoCAD 2020, and on top of it, we do have Sophie Plus. We can see the only difference is this sidebar on the left hand side with the name Sophie Plus 2020. You will now see in the default tab selected here some things we have already available in Sophistic Structural Desktop, such as the materials, the cross sections, there's also information about the bore and sole profiles, workflows, and a pre stressing system. And the navigation through the sidebar or this uh, Sophie Plus sidebar is easily structured here by tabs. So the first default tab is system. The second tab is structural elements, which is mainly used to build your structural model. Then we got the load tab to define loads, uh, either element loads or free loads, and of course to create load cases. Then we got the pre-stressing tab, which comes with the definitions of the tendons. Then we got a filter tab, which allows you to filter your structure according to loads or to structural elements. Then we got the tools tab, which comes with additional commands to make the workflow much easier, but also allows you to change the visualization of the elements. And last but not least, a message tab, which shows all the messages appearing during an export, for instance, or when creating something in Sophie Plus here in AutoCAD. Yeah, let's get started from the very top over here. So I start with the system tab and there is actually not that much to do here because we have already defined the material. Material number one was the C25 over 30 and material number two was this B500. In addition, we got also the cross sections. Um, again, there are two cross sections. You remember we got this rectangle column section as well as this T-beam cross section, which we are going to use for one of our beams in the building. As we are going to build now our project, we will spend quite some time here in the structural element tab before we will then go forward with the load tab. To make the steps a little bit quicker, I have already prepared the wireframe structure in an DXF file. And I'm now going to insert this DXF file into my project. The first step we are going to do is we open our DXF file. So I use straightforward the standard AutoCAD commands therefore, and we find it here on the top. I click on open. And what I need to do is I now just need to ensure that I have my file type selected here on DXF. And then I pick this Sophie Plus getting started geometry DXF file. And the next step is easy. I simply confirm with open. We see it here already in the screen. So what we got here, an entire wireframe of our structure. So how can we now get those line elements to our DWG or to our project? I will use this copy with base point command. Therefore, I need to select all of the elements I want to copy. And then I use the shortcut on the keyboard, Control, Shift and C. Now the program asks me to specify the base point. I will use this origin, so basically the 0, 0, 0 coordinate. So I confirm this and the program now has saved those elements in the clipboard. Now I can go back to my example and I simply paste with Control V. Now you can see all the elements stick to my cursor and I just need now to specify the insertion point, which I will do here in the region again. So enter zero, tab zero and confirm with enter. 
If I now go to the perspective view, I have my elements here. There's one command I want to make here when you use this copy with base point command. Um, please ensure that you have used the same units in the source of your wireframe model than here in your project. Otherwise, you might run into some issues. Now we got the entire wireframe here in our example and we can start create now the structural elements. Let's get started and create walls of this building. So therefore I need to use the command structural area and this command can be found here in the structural element tab. Click on this command, the input window opens and I can start entering the information I want to apply to my new structural area, so to my wall. Let's go ahead and see what we need to enter. The first tab gives us a section numbering, materials, name and thickness. For this example, we can leave actually everything on default in the numbering section. Let's have a look into the material section. Here we can find two materials, aria and reinforcement. Aria means the base material for the entire wall. So in our case, it has selected already my first concrete material, which is absolutely fine. The second material is the reinforcement. Again, it already picks the first reinforcement steel material in my database. And in that case, it is material number two. We can also assign a thickness. My walls shall stick with the default value of 200 millimeters. So there's nothing for me to change here. There are more possibilities here in this structural area dialog box, for instance, for meshing, for support and bedding, and also for the geometry. In our example, however, we can leave everything on default. Let's get started and define our first structural area. As we have the wireframe already in front of us, it's an easy task. I can use my cursor and confirm each corner of my wall element one by one. So I will zoom in over here, confirm this corner and go up to the last one. And as soon this boundary is closed, the program will generate the structural area automatically. So we see it here, this is now structural area number one. I will do the same thing for the wall in the background. I can do that as long as I want to without changing the properties over here, or if you might need to change the thickness, for instance, for one of the wall element, you can enter the new value over here and then create a new element again. However, I stick with the same thickness of 200 millimeters. So I click this next corner one by one, and also here at the very front of the building. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I go ahead and check the corners if I have set them properly. So for instance, when I zoom in, I see those lines are well aligned here in the edge corners. I zoom in here, that's fine as well. And I double check here as well, these corners. So it looks all good to me. The next input for me is to define my structural area of my slab and therefore I go ahead with the same input but I change the thickness value. So the thickness value over here can be simply changed by entering the new value and as you remember we have defined a T-beam cross-section and I will use the same thickness value as in my T-beam section. The value is 200 20. So I simply need to enter a new value of 220. I confirm this and you see it selects the value 220. Okay, now let's create the new area and I will start again by selecting all the corner points over here. Great, so we got the new area element number 5. These are all the area elements I need for my buildings. There are two ways to close the command, use the X on the top right, or what I prefer, I simply hit escape. We have now our structural areas. 
we got also some openings which represent windows and this is what I'm going to do in the next step. The opening can be defined as a separate element. I use the command opening. Here we have a quite simple input option available. Um, you can only give this opening a name, which is to my opinion not really necessary. I simply define the boundary of the opening here by selecting the corners of my windows. It is also possible to define an opening based on an element. If you would have, for instance, a rectangle already as opening defined, you could use the right click command and also select this element straight forward. You can also convert uh, circles, for instance, to an opening. Sophistic is quite flexible here in selecting or in offering options for creating the openings. Okay, so I've created all the openings and I will use escape to close the command again. You see it's quite quick to define our walls and also the slip plus the openings. In the next step we define our column and the column is a beam element and therefore I use the structural line command. The structural line command is over here. All I need to do is simply click on the command to get started. Similar as for the structural areas, we got this general tab for some general information. In that case, we got the element number and group number or the name. However, more important here is the beam cable section. As we are go ahead now and creating a column, we select a centric beam element. We got here several elements available on the element type section. Our option we look for is the centric beam element. On the right hand side, the program gives you a list of all available cross sections in the database. We have created two cross section. Cross section one was our column section, cross section two, our T beam. The program already selected by default the first cross section here in the list, which is actually also the cross section we want to use. There are more options here to refine the mesh behavior of the program in the bottom. I will not go into detail over here. We can actually leave all other tabs as they are. There's no need to change anything. So we can go ahead and create our column. To do so, we can go ahead with the same steps as for the structural area. We simply click the start point and the end point. To close the command, we only need to hit escape. Now as we have the walls, the windows, the slab as well as our column, let's look into the definition of this T-beam. The workflow is similar as for the column, we use the line command and instead of selecting cross section number one, we need to select the cross section number two. So I can now stick with the centric beam element over here and I simply select the cross section number two. There is no need to consider the eccentricity of your cross section because of the T-beam section. This is something Sophistic is doing for you automatically. We will see this after we have exported the structure. We can leave all other settings by default so there's no need to do anything else. What I need to do is to define now the structural line which works in the same way as we did for the column. I confirm the start point and the end point. I close the input command with escape. Great, so that's it actually. We have created now our structure. There is one thing missing. We have no support conditions yet. And this is what we are going to do. There are two types of supports we need to use in this example the line support and the point support. Let's start with the point support. Therefore, we look into the structural point command. We can find here on the very top in the structural elements tab. This is the structural point dialog box. It comes again with this general tab, which we can leave as it is, so there's no need to do any changes. However, we definitely need to do any changes here in the support condition tab. And as I want to have a pinned support, I need to select the PXX, the PYY and the PZZ support condition. To create the support, 
I simply need to select the point at the end of my column. To close the command, I use escape. The next support type we are going to generate is the line support. And therefore I use the structural line command. As we are not going to assign any cross section because we are interested in a support, there is uh, no need to do any selection here in the element type. What we need to do is we go straight into the support conditions tab. It's the fourth tab in this input box. And we got similar options as before for the point support. I want to create again a pinned support and therefore I tick the boxes for PXX, PYY and PZZ. And now I can create this line support. I start here in this corner, go over here and over here in that corner to this corner and I will define it also to that corner. To close the command, you already know it, we simply use the escape key. With this, we have completed our structural model. We can now export it for the very first time and see how it looks in a structural desktop. Now let's go ahead and export this structure for the very first time. Therefore, I use the export command here in the very top of the Sophie Plus sidebar. It's the second command from the left and the export window opens and I have some options here to tweak the behavior of the meshing, but for our project, we can leave everything on default and we simply need to confirm with OK. So the program now generates the mesh for you and we can have a look straight at it in Sophistic Structural Desktop. To navigate in Sophistic Structural Desktop to move your object around and use the zoom, you simply use the left mouse click to rotate it and you can use the scroll on your mouse to zoom in and out. You can also pan in your model by using the right mouse click over here. So you have the left mouse click to rotate, the scroll wheel to zoom in and out, and the right mouse button allows you to pan the model view. I hope this quick video gave you a good idea about the workflow and about the basics to create a structural model with Sophie Plus. You will find the link to the free online course in the description below. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in one of my next videos here on YouTube again. Take care.